I've never had period pains in my life. I don't even know what they feel like. But trust me, that day, I knew. <laughs> that day at 6 a.m., I knew what period pains felt like. Sweetie, this is not a private hospital. If you wanted to do what you want, you should have went to a private hospital. You're not going to do what you want here. Hey guys, welcome back to Modern Wife. If you are new here, my name is Sipogaza Somi and thank you so, so much for joining me today. Please do check out the rest of my content and if you like what you see, please do consider subscribing. So, while we're still on the topic of subscribing, I've also noted that most people that consume my content or most people that watch my videos are not yet subscribed to the channel. So instead of sounding like an entitled content creator, I thought, why don't, I, um, why don't you guys just let me know what is that one thing that makes you subscribe to the channel? Doesn't have to be this channel, any other channel that you are subscribed to. What was that one thing, that one reason that made you say, today I am hitting that red subscribe button. So please go ahead and put that in the comment section um, right now. Okay, so Melagusha recently celebrated his 10th birthday. Um, yes, guys, we have a 10-year-old. He is 10 years old. I can't believe it myself. It really, really took me back to moments when he was a baby, um, him studying his first day at school, all the way to me giving birth, which is what I'm going to be doing today, guys. I'm going to be sharing with you my labor story. I know it's very, very long overdue it's a decade later but i still think that there's quite a few learnings from my experience hence i'm sharing with you today so let's get straight to the video um okay guys just a bit of a disclaimer i'm really going to be sharing the story from my point of view and my own experiences i don't think it's fair that um to bring other people into the mix because they might have had a different experience um than mine so really it's my story and my own experiences and then uh, just to give you a bit of a background story though so that you can get context into the this whole thing I fell pregnant in 2010 um, mid 2010 which means that I gave birth uh, early 2011 and um, during this time it's the time where I was working full-time and studying full-time so I was doing my postgrad and then studying full-time and then I later had to quit my job so that I can focus on my um, on my school work which if you think about it now it's like was that really a good idea, sis, to quit your job, knowing very well that you are expecting? But yes, I did that, and then I talk all about it in my career video and my parenting video. If you haven't seen those, don't leave this video. Finish this one, but after this, please go and see um, those videos as well. So, like I was mentioning, that I was working and studying full-time, guys, which meant that I didn't really have time to do those monthly clinic visits. Well, I didn't want to do them, first of all, which is the first mistake you should always do those if you don't have medical aid make sure that you do we are clinic assistant make sure that you do those visits but i didn't do them but lucky for me um because i felt like i had funds i could go to a private doctor so i was visiting a gynecologist on a monthly basis and then when i quit my job i then started to reevaluate things and be like mm, okay do I really need to spend so much money on the gynecologist, um, on the gynecologist instead of saving it um, for the little one? So I sort of stopped. Again, another mistake. I sort of stopped, but then I think towards the end of the year, I went back to stay with my aunt who was a nurse. And I told her that, oh, okay, look, this is what has been happening. I've been visiting a gynecologist and I haven't been doing my clinic visits. And she told me that, look, this is going to be an issue for you. If you're not giving birth in a private hospital and you're going to give birth in a public hospital this is really going to be an issue for you and at this time really i couldn't afford to give birth in a private hospital i didn't have medical aid and there was a little human coming um, um very soon i don't have a job so it does it didn't make sense for me to take the little money that i had and put it to a private hospital instead of giving birth to a public hospital but now the issue was that I didn't have that clinic card and um, I don't know maybe things have, uh, have changed now but in public hospitals they don't even look at you if you don't have that card they don't even look at you so um, but lucky for me I come from a family of nurses and as, as I've mentioned my aunt was a nurse so she organized for me to 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 start 
um, my clinic visit at the hospital that she was working in and I was also going to give birth at this hospital which was a good thing because now I was doing my clinic visits in a hospital and not necessarily a public clinic and which meant that I still saw um, gynecologist nurses and gynecologist so I did that for I think about three months before I gave birth and I was able to get a clinic card I was able to get um, my due date my estimated um, date so now going back to 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 the bad story so I think I started feeling um, pains at 6 a.m. this one day uh, at 6 a.m. started feeling pains um, and then it felt like period pains mind you at that time I didn't even know what period pains felt like I remember having a conversation with my aunt and asking her okay how would I know if I'm in, if I'm contracting how would I know that I'm in labor and then she will say that she said that no you would start feeling something like period pains and I said to her I've never had period pains in my life I don't even know what they feel like but trust me that day I knew <laughs> that day at 6 a.m. I knew what period pains felt like and then I woke up in the morning and I told her and I said look this is what is happening and uh, she said to me but you seem fine so she said, you know what, just take a bath and get ready. My bag was already ready so that if things get worse, then you can just go to the hospital. I think I did that. At 8 a.m., I was like, okay, this hasn't really stopped. So she was like, okay, I think it's, it's, it will be good for you to go to hospital. But I was fine. Everything was okay. So she said, you, do you think you can go by yourself? And I was like, oh, no, no, actually, she wanted to get me a car because she didn't have a car. So I said, look. I think I can get myself to a hospital, I can take a taxi, I'm still fine, there's nothing wrong, I'm still fine, if anything, I will call you, I will give birth in a taxi. So then I went to hospital, I think I arrived at 10 a.m., around 10 a.m. I was in hospital, this young Bella, and when I got there, they're like, what are you doing here? So I said, look, I think this baby is coming, and they're like, but you're fine, there's nothing, and I said, look, I think... Uh, I started feeling contractions from 6 a.m. in the morning um, and then hence I am here today. So they did a few tests I think between that time and 2 p.m. So they just did a few checkups. Uh, they kept me in a waiting room. I think it's a waiting area. It's, it wasn't even a lower room. They kept me in the waiting area. I think guys from that time from 10 to 2 I was just in that waiting area doing blood tests and all of that and um, a midwife would come every now and again and be like no she's still far and then I think it was only at 4 p.m. where I was admitted and then I was taken to the labor ward but even at this time at 4 p.m. I'm taken to the labor ward I am not taken to the delivery room because they had separated it. I think there was A or B. So they're taking me to the labor ward, um, but I'm not yet going to the delivery room. And when I get there, yo, guys, people are screaming. Others are marching up and down. Mind you, this is my first pregnancy. Like, I don't even know what to expect. And I've always been shying away from watching those delivery videos. I was shying away... Um, from reading a lot about what happens on the delivery day i was like i just don't want to know i don't want to scare myself i will see when i see so now i get there guys people are screaming there was this lady yo she was screaming and she's not yet even in the delivery room because that's why they separate you so that if you are still very far or if you are still i think if you are still below um, six meters dilated I'm not quite sure six centimeters dilated they keep you they keep you in the labor, labor ward and then I think eight meters or so then they take you to the delivery room so the nurses were even saying why is she screaming because she's not even yet there but I think her contractions were very bad mine on the other hand not so much I was there for 4 p.m. 6 p.m. still nothing guys I'm on whatsapp I'm chatting to my friends and they're like where are you I'm like I'm in hospital like, but how are you on your phone I'm like look this is right young londole hi 7 p.m <laughs> they're coming heavy now contractions are coming heavy now i go and do sweet and then i'm like okay guys then i'm you need to start marching you need to start doing all of that i think 
yeah seven seven between seven and eight p.m then they're like okay now it's, it's time for us to take you to the delivery room i think i was probably eight centimeters at that time eight centimeters dilated then they took me to the delivery room still in the delivery room i'm in pain like contractions are just coming heavy i'm still in pain but now corner they're saying no okay um you're not ready you're not yet ready i bo i think i was there for another hour and I remember this lady, she was so sweet. I think she was a staff nurse. So she was so sweet. She was busy talking to me and asking me a few questions. Okay, how old I am? What is it that I'm doing? And then uh, she was like, no, I ain't get this. I ain't get this. I ain't and I'm like, okay. And she's like, they're probably going to induce you. And I'm like, but I've heard that that's even more painful. Then Nyanige, they induce me. <laughs> the worst pain of my life the worst pain of my life and now i am i think at this time now it's 9 p.m and they put those things i don't know what they called i'm gonna try and find the name but our mapant band they put that around your so now i'm in those things i am in pain it is getting late i've been here almost 12 hours because i walked in at 10 and now it's after 9 p.m. And I'm in so much, so much pain, excruciating pain. And then I think around 10 p.m., she's like, I engage, this is, it's still so good. So it's between her and the midwife. So the midwife keeps coming in and all of that. And they're like, no, man, um, I don't know why. I don't know why the baby is, is not yet here. Then eventually they're like, okay, the baby is here. So now I think they've induced me two times at this time. They've induced me two times. Then she's like, no, the baby is, is, is almost here. This Indian lady who's a midwife comes through. And then they're like, now you need to start pushing. And I'm like, okay. And at this time, I am crying myself. I'm saying things that don't make sense. I am shouting at this lady, asking her if she's had kids or whatever it is. And why would she put herself through this pain? I'm saying all those things. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. And then, um, so then that's what happens. And then I think around 11 p.m., then they say, okay, you need to start pushing now. Then dim all, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. And as I'm pushing, I will, guys, I go to wins again. You know when you're like, okay, this is like the biggest push I'm going to do. <laughs> and nothing happens. And this midwife shouts at me and says, you're going to kill this baby. You're going to kill this baby. If you don't push, this baby also katala lomduana, and you have to push, you're going to kill this baby. Now I'm so worried because I'm like, I'm pushing. I don't know what more you want me to do. Then I pushed. Then nothing happens. So after that, at this time, I'm not quite sure whether they've induced me again. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what ha what's happening at this time. Mind you, like I said, this is really my first pregnancy. I don't even know what to expect. Then I say to her, after this thing and after she shouted at me and telling me that I'm going to kill the baby. So I said to them, but why don't you guys do a C-section? Because clearly this baby, I guess, because now they like, I get we don't know what's going on. So I'm like, why don't you do a C-section? Because this baby is clearly not happening. Guys, listen here. The midwife, and then she says to me, sweetie, this is not a private hospital. If you wanted to do what you want, you should have went to a private hospital. You're not going to do what you want here. I'll, I'll just let you take that in. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. An hour after she said that, an hour, probably another hour goes by after she said that. Now it's past midnight. Because when I, I'm probably asking this question, I think it was probably at 1 a.m. or so. It's now past midnight from probably me moving to the delivery room at 10 p.m., 9 p.m. I've been here for almost four hours. And then I think around 3 a.m. or so, yes, I think it was around 3 a.m. Around 3 a.m., I think I've tried pushing now, guys, at least three times. Not, not like push one, two, three times, like three intervals. I've had three intervals where I've tried to push, and I'm in so much pain. But the baby is just not coming. And they're saying that the baby is here, the baby is here. They can see, but the baby is not yet coming. I think at 3 a.m., then eventually she decides to make a decision to say, you know what, maybe we should call a doctor. At 3 a.m., guys. 
Then she calls the doctor. Guys, the doctor comes to my delivery room. Less than five seconds. Doctor comes to my delivery room. No, she's not going to be able to give birth naturally. Guys, that's what the doctor said. Just five seconds. No, she's not going to be able to give birth naturally. Naturally, we need to do a C-section. You need to prepare her to go to theater. I felt like punching her. I felt like punching her. And then I am now prepared to go to theater. They're preparing me to go to theater. Now I can't call my family and tell them what's going on. I'm in pain. Now it's a rush job, guys. Now this thing, it's a rush job. It's an emergency section now. And I was busy signing this. I don't even know what I was signing for. But then, no sign. This is to say that we need to, we, you are allowing us to do this. And I mean, and, so, and the worst part is that, guys, this doctor that comes to me at 3 a.m. and is saying that I need to be prepared for a C-section is knocking off at 7 a.m. So they need to do everything now in a rush because the next doctor who's going to come in at 7 a.m., it's going to be way too late. So between now and 7 a.m., we need to make sure that I deliver this baby. And this doctor is not only here for me. He has other patients. So that's why now it's a rush job. Everything. The way I was taken to theater, everything. Then, eventually I go to a theater. Okay, so now the anesthetics um, uh, comes through. I think at this time it's probably like at four. I don't know. I wasn't keeping track of time. So, but I know that it was just after that whole rush job. So then uh, she comes through. Okay, the sister comes through and says, okay, we need to do this. So we need to um, basically say, and guys, we need to basically say, you need not to move. Because if you move, there's a possibility of you being paralyzed. So I'm like, maybe you should have said this a bit nicer or in a different way because now I'm terrified. The chances of me moving are way, way much, much higher. And you're telling me that I need not to move. It's what's going to make me move. And the guys, that is the worst thing. That is the worst thing that I've ever experienced, that anesthetic. And it goes in and then in a few minutes, really, I didn't feel my lower body. And uh, yeah, probably in a few minutes or so, I didn't feel my lower body. Then I was in theater. All alone, my aunt is not here, father of the baby not here, no one. Just me and doctors and nurses. And then um, eventually then I do give birth. So after that, most, ne? Uh, they would obviously take the baby away because um, in a matter of few minutes you fall asleep, you're very tired and all of that. But whilst back to because I could hear everything, it's just my lower body. I could hear everything, I could hear everything that they were saying, it's just that I couldn't feel pain. So now after that, I will, I'm like, push, push. I hear starting, I, I just hear that sound. It's like someone is teaching me. And I'm like, guys, we are in 2011. There's no way, no how that Ndingabendens were umtung or stitch, but I don't see anything. Then they put a bandage on, I go back to, 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 to my ward now with other mothers, and I'm asking, why are you guys taking my baby? They're like, no, we have to take him to the nursery, we'll bring him later, we'll bath him and do all of those things, and then we'll bring him later. And then yeah, yeah, they do that, they bring the baby. Later on, he is so yellow bone, nothing like me. <laughs> But he's healthy and all of that. And he had a mark here. I'm so glad that disappeared. He had a mark here because I think as they were pulling him out, um, because everything in Jaguar is. So then um, the baby comes, and then uh, uh, my aunt comes to visit now. So now I can have visitors and they can come and see the baby. Because she works here, but uh, the day before, I think she was off. She was off, so now she's coming to work. So she comes and visits me. She says that I'm fine and all of that. The first thing I do, guys, is to tell her about my experience with that midwife. So I tell her that like, this is what happened. So first of all, she couldn't even believe that I had a C-section. Because the way that I was so rushed, like I couldn't even call them and tell them that this is what is happening. So she's like, okay. And I'm like, no, I had a C-section. She's like, oh, my daughter, you're so young, all of this and whatever, ever, ever. And I said, look, I had a C-section after I actually asked for one. And this lady said, no, this is not a private hospital. Guys, if you know my family, firstly, I come from a family um, mostly with females and um we do not mince our words 
if you say that you don't want to mess with us we do not mean our own words like my aunt felt like she couldn't believe it she couldn't believe it she said she said what i said yeah bo. she said to me sweetie this is not a private hospital if you wanted to do what you want you should have went to a private hospital we're not gonna do what you want here so firstly guys this is my problem this is really my problem with um public institutions or government institutions i hate this i hate this superiority complex that people that work at this government office offices think that they have they look down on you just based on the fact that you are black i'm like you are a black person yourself because that indian lady she is black so you are a black person yourself but you're looking down upon me they have this thing that if and you are uneducated and because you are black we can just treat you whatever so that was my issue is that first of all you don't even know why i was asking for a c-section and i'm thinking i am i am well educated i know what i was saying there but no because i'm a black person who happens to have a child before they got married to you i'm a bimbo to you nje vele i'm a bimbo so i told my aunt and my aunt was more upset than me she was so upset then we saw the baby and you get under Little did I know that when she went back to work, she reported this lady. And she's like, do you think you can still remember who she was? And I said, no, I don't remember her name. I didn't pay attention to her name badge. But she was the only Indian midwife that was there. <laughs> I don't know whether this lady went back to my file and checked records or whatever it is. But she reported it to PR. And she's like, no, she's not going to do that. She reported it to PR. <laughs> So that happened, but because I was I had a C-section, I had to be admitted for a day or two. Yes. So now, following day, guys, another shocker. Following day, um, they come uh, with in what do you call this? With birth control. So there's this thing again, which I'm not quite sure if they still do. I don't understand why are people forced to take birth control. So after you give birth then they like okay no you ha we have to inject you this is the bed control that um they don't ask you uba do you have a problem with injections what would you prefer younger londole i think a day yeah i think it was probably a day after but figure with the people that have given birth the previous day and they like no no and these ladies are like i mean if if i'm like guys what do you think we are like what do you think we are then they injected them against their will. Then I tell my aunt again when she comes to visit me and I'm like, look, this is what is happening. Those people are busy injecting us against our will. And she's like, no, just tell them that you're gonna take other bed control options and they mustn't inject you. So when they come through to me, I'm like, look, um, guys, I choose not to be injected. Um, I have valued other options, bed control options, and I don't wanna use an injection when I live here. I will make use of the bed controls that are most suitable to me. And everyone else was shocked. They were like, you can do that? And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Then, uh, so now I became this lady, or oh, she knows better than everyone because she is refusing to, to, to take bed control. So then even the food that they would give you, this lady, she would come and be like, you need to eat this. I'm like, no, I'm not going to eat this. They'll bring food for me. She's like, hey, Linda my KFC, Linda my KFC. So then I'm like, no, thank you very much. I'm not going to eat your food. Um, they'll bring food that is best for me. And they're like, but you had a C-section. There's a certain food that you're supposed to have. You're not have, supposed to have solids and stuff like that. And I'm like, look, my family knows that. They'll bring me stuff that is suitable for me. So it's fine. You can keep your food. They'll bring me my food. And... Um, I know what I need to do. I know what I need not to eat. And guys, hey, the pain that you go through for those three days that you're still in hospital, because now Kalomu is dish ziplungu, is dish ziplungu. So then I think my aunt doesn't tell me that she reported this lady Gaga Lento at um, at um, a PR. 
and I think now this is day yeah probably day two after I've, I've rejected the injection now so it's that on the word I've now injected the injection then the next thing this lady comes through this midwife she comes through with two other ladies from PR and they're like opus pogas and I'm like here I am and then I'm like ha when was like mean and then this midwife comes to me and then they say okay no um uh we there was a like, complaint that was um um laid against um, this midwife can you tell us what happened then i'm like okay this is what Usisa said and what upsets me the most is that she said what she said and i still had a c-section so i feel like i can actually even sue you guys because she does first of all she doesn't advise me nicely why i can't have a c-section and secondly you guys go on performing the same c-section that you said i'm not um eligible for because i am in a public hospital so I said, okay, so did she not tell you the dangers of the C-section and all of that? And I said, no, she didn't. She just said to me, if I wanted to do what I want, I should have went to a private hospital. So then she's like, oh, okay, I am really sorry uh, for, for, for uh, if I upset you. I'm like, you're still saying if. She's like, I'm like, first of all, the fact that you are coming here and saying that you are sorry, but you're saying you are sorry if, if. I'm like, okay, so I'm really sorry for upsetting you. It's just that um, um, we always prefer the natural birth is the best option. And we always prefer for a mother to have a natural birth if she can. Um, before we can do a C-section because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There are dangers and whatever. And I'm like, why couldn't you say that on that day? Why couldn't you tell me that? Why do you have to tell me that? Because this is not a public hospital. I'm like, the worst part is that you went after you told me that. I still went and had a C-section. Is this now a private hospital? Because I still did what you said I couldn't do. After pushing, I'm like, you made me wait for four hours. Four hours and three intervals of pushing. And you even went to an extent of telling me that I could kill my baby, whereas you are the one who almost killed my baby. The worst part of it all is that I was so rushed that I couldn't even call my family. I couldn't speak to anyone. I was there all alone because now it was such a rush thing. And she's like, no, I'm really sorry, um, whatever, ever, I apologize, blah, 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 this is not what I normally do, and whatever, ever, and then these guys were like, okay, no, we apologize, whatever, ever, would you like to take this thing further? And I'm like, okay, my aunt still works here to not make things difficult for her, let me just say, okay, you know what, to say it's fine, let's just call it whatever, but next time, please don't do that, please don't undermine people, first of all, just because we are here in a public hospital, it doesn't mean that we are idiots. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I really hope that you learn something i really hope and um, that you learn something about being pregnant young guys being pregnant and not married being pregnant and not employed so i really was like okay maybe sis um uh, this was not the best but um we live and we learn and yeah i did things differently the second time around so thank you so much guys for watching if you really love this video please make sure to give it a massive thumbs up and until we meet again i love you so so much bye